protest has led to momentous political change from desegregation to the removal of dictators in places like Tunisia to the recent Never Again movement led by students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School who are able to press for gun control legislation in Florida. But we know that protesters don't always reach their goals. And so this raises the question, what makes for a successful protest? One long-standing explanation looks at the political opportunity structure surrounding the protests. So it asks questions like, is there a democratic regime? Does the government sympathize with the protesters? And if the government is opposed, is it weak or divided? Now clearly these are important considerations, but this raises the question, does it even matter what the protesters themselves do? Uh, practitioners of nonviolence, going back to Gandhi, have argued that the tactics of protest are crucially important. And recently, social scientists have been looking at this. So uh, a good start with this is the bargaining perspective. Most people don't have a lot of power to negotiate with government officials. But if people band together, the theory goes, you can disrupt the normal state of affairs enough that people in power will feel pressure to give in to those demands in order to stop the disruption. And we can look at it this way. We can look at a continuum of protest tactics from conventional tactics up through more disruptive tactics. So at the conventional end, we have things like uh, demonstrations, petitions, on up to strikes be becoming more disruptive, and then violent actions at, at the very high end. And so this theory suggests that governments will tend to ignore more conventional actions, and as the disruption increases, they're more likely to concede to the demands of the protesters. This misses a couple of important points, though. First of all, governments also have the option of repression, and there's a bulk of evidence that as challenges become more violent, the likelihood of repression goes way up. Also, the power of protest is not based just in disruption, but also protests can win over allies who can help the protesters. Or not, if the protests are too radical in the eyes of the beholder, then they may not join the cause of the protesters. So putting all this together, this suggests a strategy of trying to find the Goldilocks zone of protest tactics. So again, we have tactics from conventional to disruptive. But here, let's consider the public response. So how's the public respond to really conventional type of protest tactics? Well, there may be a collective yawn here. In fact, you may not even know there, were, there was a protest because the news may not even cover it. Okay? Now, people can get the attention of the media by doing things that are more outrageous, more disruptive, even violent. You do get media attention, but it might be the wrong kind of attention you may end up horrifying a lot of people who will not join your cause. So we can expect that the government responds to actions that are too conventional to ignore them, too disruptive to repress them. So we have to find the zone that's just right, where the public is aware of the protest, but also approves of it. And this is where concessions are most likely. The type of actions I'm talking about here are actions where there is some type of pressure, or some type of dramatization that gets people's attention, but these are also nonviolent actions. So things like strikes, sit-ins, and hunger strikes fit the bill. It also helps to have realistic demands and objectives. If your goal is to overthrow the government or to get rid of all inequality, you're probably not going to be successful. It helps to be persistent. Protests usually do not work overnight. And it helps to mobilize a lot of people. Even more conventional actions can be more successful if you have tens of thousands of people who show up. Like with most things in life, there's no guarantee here, but there's evidence that this is a strategy which helps to uh, with the, answer the question of how to fight the power. Thank you.